Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to Tony North Easton. And I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And I hope you're all enjoying your railways too. So I've certainly been enjoying the build of this station. Um, where we left off last week we put in some steps from the station level here all the way down to the high street down there. So what we're going to be doing this week, well as you can see you've got Mr. Pull Lever there talking to the station master and the station master says he's going to get his signal box quite soon so he's given the go here for me to build that. So Mr. Pull Lever will be very happy about that. So the space I've allowed for the signal box is roughly about 50 millimeters by 95 millimeters, so it should be um, a reasonable size signal box because um, I'm working for photographs. Uh, I'll show you those in a minute, and um, it sits just here in front of this um, wooden um, wooden boards. Um, at some point I'll probably end up putting the levers, mechanical levers, in to um, change the points at some point. Yeah. Right. And here we have a photograph of the South Shields signal box. I've spent most of the morning um, working out dimensions from this signal box. Um, I've got the height uh, and everything from this photograph here, the front face, um, I've decided to make the windows at 20 millimeters, and um, and if you use that measurement there against the measurement from here to here, you get 2.1 times the window size. That's how I managed to work out the actual heights of the windows. And here also is roughly, you can just about make out a couple of bricks. So I got my vernier on the two bricks and then worked it out. And it's roughly about seven seven bricks. Um, so that's roughly um, eight millimeters off the floor. So that's, uh, it took a long time to um, figure this, this out. And the interesting feature is this little thing on the top of the signal box there. So that's some sort of air vent or something. Never seen one of those on a signal box before. Now the good thing about the chimney is you can actually see the bricks. So I managed to count the bricks. Um, so I've managed to get the sizes of the chimney from that. Right, so it's uh, it's been interesting to say the least. Let's flip this over. That's what I've been drawing on. So here we have all the dimensions except for the roof. I haven't done the, the sizes for the roof yet. I've got the heights for the chimney part, the width of the chimney part, the actual height of the single box. Now this 90 mil by 46 mil is about. Um, the, uh, the only space I can afford to use um, at the end of the station um, due to space restrictions but it roughly works out the same um, the change I'm putting in is I'm putting a door here because I like the idea of three little windows here like you saw in this photograph there So we're more or less ready to rock and roll with a bit. So the first thing I want to start with is the doors. Um, these are smart modelled laser cut doors. Um, as you can see they were a little bit wider and longer so what I've done is I've cut the top off and trimmed down the sides at least a millimetre either side and there's the trimmings there. These are the back panels which are going to cover these up. So that makes those doors. Now the lower door is made from 
L cut creative. Um, there were double doors, so all I've done is I've taken out the left hand door, leaving the framework on the top. See, it's missing there. And then cut at least 1.5 millimeter off that edge, and then glued it back on to the side of here to create a new door frame. If I flip it over, I have stuck the whole lot on a piece of paper to give it extra strength. So that's the lower door. So that's the doors done. All I've got to do is glue this lot together, glue the panel into there, and do like I've done here, but with plastic, it's create a door frame to go around there. And then that's the doors done. Now that the doors have done, um, it's time to put all these dimensions on this drawing onto a sheet of 2mm card. Because that's what I'm making the building out of, 2mm card. I've cut all the card pieces out to make the lower part of the signal box. Um, nothing has changed um, regarding the sizes. I think I've added some extra sizes on, like I missed out here the 6.5 up from the floor, and um, little things like that which I missed when I was doing the measuring up. So here we have our signal box ready to go together. Now a little tip for you is um, I've cut the pencil mark right off on both sides here. That's allowed, allowing for the um, paper, brick paper, to go through. Similar to what we did on the station. But um, I have a slight problem here. Um, I seem to have acquired uh, an extra signal box. Um, oh yes, a competition. I'm going to run a competition. I'm going to keep one signal box. And the other signal box is going to go to one of you guys. Um, so once it's finished, I'll be doing a, a sort of a, a, a question about the signal box. So um, I hope if you're watching this, you're, you'll pay attention. So the, the two signal boxes will be identical on the outside. On the inside, however, um, I won't be putting any levers in or anything like that, but I'll be leaving the roof off so you can put your own detail in because you might not want it to look exactly the same as mine. I'll paint it out on the inside, um, but I uh, will, um, and, and I'll put an LED in, of course, and, uh, and the rest is up to you. So, these are now ready to go together. Before they go together, I need to mark out a floor. Um, this here is a good indicator because that's the lower part of the door. So, what I could do is just come down a millimetre the width of this card and then that will be the floor. So, now I've got to mark out all the flooring level. On these pieces. So I've marked all the flooring levels out onto the card so the top line is where the edge of the floor would sit and I've made all these supports for the flooring. Um, so that's the next task is to get all the supports ready for um, assembly. Um, one thing I have noticed is um, just to, to make sure your edges are cut nice and square um, because every little millimetre counts. So that's the first piece in. Just make sure it's flush at the back and flush with the bottom. Just by pressing it on your mat. Right. One down. Three more sides to go. So I have put in all the supports now for the floor. As you can see I've left a little bit of a gap there. One mil on all of these just there, that's enough for the floor to sit on. So when that sits on there, that should be level with the line. Um, on the left hand side, I've done that. So basically what I'll do is, once the card is cut, all I'll do is just glue the door into that recess. That 
I did that for one reason. It keeps this rigid for when I come to put the door in. Um, and it keeps it solid as well. It just gives that a little bit of a solid foundation for the for the whole build. So that now is virtually ready to go together. So here we go. I'm using the um, quick card glue here. Um, I have tr trial fitted all these little bits of card just to make sure that they are going to fit. And uh, just a case of um, just putting them together to try and keep the base as flat as possible. And the edges flush. Now that when you're making something like this and you want to keep the dimensions the same, always take the two millimeters off the front and the back wall to get the sizes that you want. So that then should just pop in there and that should keep it square. Like I say, I've already trial fitted all these pieces, so they should go together. Make sure it's pressed down with the supports. And then we'll put this one in here. Because I've scribed the, the card here, it's kind of put an amber in it. I'm just going to make sure that stays flat while the glue's going off. It sh shouldn't take long for this stuff because it's quite good for... And then I'll just check underneath make sure there's no gaps in the joints. Okay, so I've just put the front on. Right, so we have the lower half of the signal box finished now. So, oops, I've still got one more to do. I'm just making sure now all the joints are glued correctly and last check just to make sure it stayed square. Right, so that's them glued together, both of them. Um, what I've actually done inside is reinforced the back edge and the front edge. Um, so that makes that nice, thick and chunky for, for handling and just gives it an extra bit of strength as well. So now that's ready for floor can be painted and inside there that can be painted and the underside there can be painted. So while I'm waiting for the paint to dry I've got the magnifying glass out and um, I'm looking at the chimney and I'm just trying to count the bricks on the chimney going away from us. Um, it's around two, two, three, one, two, six bricks. So as you can see there's roughly about six bricks but if I put this magnifying glass in Helps define it a little bit better. There. So by doing what we've just done, um, although it's six bricks, it's roughly um, three um, standard size bricks and three half bricks. So it's the same pattern as what we've got on this Medcalf brick 
brick sheeting and it works out roughly at 14 millimeters so that's one of the tricks I've learned from getting um, the scale right for when building anything really so that's just a, a good reference so I've marked that on this paper here so it's 14 by 6 mil um, so that's what we're going to be looking at next we'll, we'll construct the two chimneys So as you can see, I've, I've marked out a template for the chimneys. Um, so it starts off wide at the top, halfway up. It narrows to this size that we want of 14 millimeters. But that's slightly less than 14 millimeters because you've got allowed for the, um, the the paper brick to go around. But yeah, so that's going to give us an idea. We have a hole there. Obviously, I've got to make this hollow to allow for the cables to come up into the signal box to light the LED and um, as you can see if I hold that there in position you can't see the hole but what I'll have to do is before I fit the chimney to the signal box I'll just have to cut a little V in there to allow the cables to come through and hopefully you shouldn't see them in the, in the signal box when it's done So we have a front piece and we have a back piece, so what are we going to do about the middle piece? Well, this is what we've got here. I have glued two pieces of the cart together, 2mm, um, 2mm, so that gives us 4mm and they're 1mm each. So that gives us a 6mm across the chimney breast. So, in order to get the cables up into the, the roof of the signal box, I've drilled a hole through the centre piece of the chimney so I then can take this piece out and then once that is glued to that and the back piece is glued to the back we'll then have a little channel inside the chimney for the cables to run down and then you should end up with something like this now that groove in the middle there is roughly about four millimeters wide so you've got a 4mm square hole in there, which is plenty for the um, cables. And I've stuck it to the back piece first. That helps to keep these in line, because once that centre is cut out, these, these ends tend to want to spring all over the place. So I'll just glue it to the back piece, um, ready. And, uh, yeah, and then, uh, that, then you glue the, the other piece on top. Uh, where's the B? That's it, B. So that would glue on the top of there, and then you would never know there was a slot in there. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm actually going to be painting where the card is likely to be seen, because uh, I'm using the card for this, not the sheet. So I'll only go up to the edge. So basically if I paint inside of there, before I put the card in, and that'll save me trying to paint it up when the door's in. And this one as well, just a little bit on the edge. So now we have the card ready to go onto the lower half of the signal box. Now then, a little tip for you, because I'm using card and not sheet, um, you can score the back edge of a flap for the return on the windows and then just peel it back. Because you can peel these bits off, you can see it's coming away there already. As long as you don't go too deep with a score, you can peel that off. And that just makes it a lot easier to fold around because the, the card sheet, uh, the card is quite thick. So I just thought I'd show you this. So this is ready to go on to signal box A. So, like so. So I'll just glue this on. Right, so that's the signal box all bricked up now. Um, I've added the doors as well. So that's that done on the lower door anyway and uh, the back is bricked up. So 
what we're up to now is brick papering the chimney pot um, I'm using paper for this one because it's just uh, too much of a fiddle to try and use the thicker card and as you can see I have measured and folded to the shape of the chimney so what will happen now is I shall glue that on there and then cut this excess off and then just put a little bit in here where it comes past the signal box and once they're done I've just got to put a little notch in there for the cables to come through right that's the ch chimneys done and they're now glued to the back of the signal box I've also glued in the door um, ready so that uh, we can almost start the windows but I've already done the two little windows already made from one by one plastic strip and then 0.2 by 0.7 strips across the back um, four pieces one for the top and then two in the middle and that gives you the nine panels of glass like you see in the photograph so the next phase is is to start mounting the frames onto here so what I'm going to do first is give it some sort of landing to put the glass frames onto so I'm going to super glue some of this plastic strip all the way around these three edges and then we'll make the frames up on these from that so now that we've got our um, base frame in we can start building the windows up on this base frame um, just by reverting back to the drawing we know it's 90 millimeters so we make the, the first big pane um, 90 millimeters but we've got to allow for the one half mil strips on either end so we'll take that into account knock the three millimeters off and then we can build our window frame so as you can see I'm well on my way with these windows um, I've already built one set for one of these signal boxes I'm just working on the second set now and as you can see it's quite a fiddly and the little task is this um, with the different sizes of um, plastic strip as well um, these strips here are one mil by one mil square and just iron them up with the squares on the mat here to try and get them parallel to each other um, these strips on the end are 1.5 square and the little cross pieces for the windows is 0.2 by 0.7 mil um, and these act as the, the braces for each of the windows now these were a right fiddle to get in just kept wanting to move everywhere but um, it's working out okay so that's the, the one that sits on the front like so if I just get this in the camera you can see what I mean so we're looking at the photograph again and as you can see there's a window open and as you can see they are quite big window panels so I've kind of um, replicated that by having a window open so this is what I've done as you can see I've made the frame and it looks like the window has slid open now this was the fiddliest part to do fitting in these little cross members um, so all I did was is lay the frame on its on its back and then just drop these in make sure they're nice tight fit and then just put a little tiny dab of glue either side and they, they do take a while to um, go off but um, it seems to have worked so now we can start putting all these window frames into the signal box so that's the glazing in now 
Um, it went together quite well and uh, quite pleased with the way that uh, both um, signal boxes have come out. Um, I've added another strip of plastic card on the top, hopefully to try and stiffen up the, the front um, window here. Yeah, it seems to have worked, but I'll probably will add some more stiffness in there once all the internals are done. Um, this is signal box B. Signal box B is the one that's going into the competition at the end of the video. So the next thing to do is to paint the windows. I have placed the signal box onto the platform just to give me an indication of um, where and how I need to fit these steps coming down from the top door there. I've got two options. I can come straight out or I can come down the side because it's not too clear in the photographs. Um, I know with the view that we got this side there's a gantry in the way and you can't quite see whether the steps come down or come straight out. Um, but I think for the purpose of this build I think I'll have the steps coming down the side rather than coming straight out. So that's where we are now. We're going to do the steps. So I have now painted the handrail and I think that was the hardest part of it. Um, it was a lot easier to, to make that handrail than it was to paint it. Um, as you can see it uh, hasn't turned out too bad. Uh, if you look closely on the door there, just here, you can see the handles, door handles. Now what they are, they are track pins. Um, they are the fine scale track pins. What I've done is cut the heads off, drilled a 0.5 hole in there and then super glued them in. One there, uh, one down there on the bottom. If you can see that, there you go. So yeah, so that's that done. So we're slowly getting there. So the next thing I want to do is put in the concrete sill and lintels on these, and the concrete lintel on that door around the corner there. And that's virtually all the outside done. It's just a case of putting the windows in, and then we can look at the roofs. So. I'm now looking at the sills and it, they look like concrete ones rather than stone ones. So what I'll do is I'll just um, paint them in concrete grey. So what I'm using for the sills is just little strips of paper, um, two mil wide and a little bit of PVA wood glue onto where they're going. and then stick them in situ. And then once they're dry, I'll paint them in concrete grey. So as you can see, I've got the glazing in now. And um, it was, I tried filming it, but I just, I just need to get in there and you can't quite see it and you wouldn't have seen it anyway so what I did was I laid the glass in and then used the glue and glaze on the very tip of a toothpick and just gently a little bit at a time just put it into the crevice there and um, did the bottom edge first and laid it down and then did the top edge and then put that glass in and then try and got into the corner there with the toothpick and then do the same again. If I did split any onto the glass I just got a damp cotton bud and just wiped it off and as you can see there's hardly any marks on there at all. I'm just thinking to myself this is weird this uh, I normally build one-offs but um, building two the same it's a bit different. So that's the concrete painted. It's it's touch dry now, um, so we'll um, weather that up later on. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I've added this um, brick plinth 
which is on the photograph, uh, but I'm not sure if it's concrete or brick. So I've done it as brick, and it just breaks uh, breaks up the signal box a little bit. And I've also added some centeners in the top, made out of uh, one mil thick sheet, just one in each corner, just to give that a bit more, a bit more strength across there. Right, so now we're going to start the roof. Um, I've made a little bit of a start. I have made some roof trusses. Um, these have been notched out to take the bracket for the LED, two of them in the middle, so they'll be glued um, like so, and the LED will be super glued in the centre, well, off centre. The reason being why it's off centre, because there's not a lot of room in the roof. You'll, you'll see as we go on for, um, for uh, the, the space I've had in the centre, by the time you get the cable on there's not enough um, space in there to allow for the cable to go down the chimney. So I've, I've, I've drilled it off centre. And uh, there we've got all our trusses together. And as you can see, Mr. Pull lever here as I'm um, keeping an eye on me, making sure I do a proper job. <laughs> Typical. So we can see what I've done here. I've took one of these main trusses, split it down the middle, and formed a T piece. So that will give me the slope for the edge as well. So all I've got to do now is preset that so that hangs over the edge by about two millimeters both ends then I've got a set measurement for cutting the away for the slope that comes down to past the corners and once I've got that I can then add little bits of card to come from that corner outwards if you see my drift anyway that's how I plan to do the roof and as you can see there's not a lot of room between the hole in the chimney and the LED, unless I turn it around of course, that give me a bit more space there to get the um, resistor in. So as you can see I've got my roof um, pieces ready um, just by using bits of scraps I've got left over and to work out the dimensions well it, it's simple because I've already made my roof trusses to overhang by two mil either side and um, basically I've just measured the tops and that will just sit on there nicely so what I've got to do though before I do that I've got to glue these together to form like a butterfly shape so I'll do this now and I'll leave it to dry Just a piece of paper. Try a bit there. Cross the two, and then I can always cut the paper off later. So, as you can see, I've already soldered the resistor on. So, all I'm doing now is just tinning the cables and then soldering them onto the LEDs and the uh, neutral. So the red will be the live, so that's going to go straight onto the resistor. And then the uh, neutral. So what I'm doing is just um, glue these with the T pumping outwards. And then you've got somewhere to glue the card when you come to do the roof going this way. All I've done here is I've used that same angle, made up extra ones of these, cut them in half, and that's how we get the slope running that way.
Me too. Now, as you can see, I've added the LED with the um, cables, and if you've noticed, I've notched out for the chimney, like we have on this one. So the next thing to do is to fit the apexes going this way. Now the handy thing about doing it like this, you've already got the dimensions across there, so it's just a case of measuring across there and then from the tip to there and then cutting up the triangles and then gluing them on. So to glue these triangles on, what I did first was I glued these tabs onto each side of this um, butterfly as it were and then glued the triangle on then you've got three points of contact for the glue which is here, here and then obviously the rib and then what I'm doing now is I'm fitting extra ribs underneath so that when we come to put it onto the signal box it's got support in this corner because at the moment you only have the support there so by adding these, making sure that they're flat in line with the others, that way and that way, that gives you a good basis to stick this onto the signal box. So now we move on to the air vent, which goes on top of the signal box here. And uh, I've gone through my common handy box and I found some bits and pieces. I found some um, five mil round plastic, you've probably seen this off the airfix kits or whatever, so it's about roughly about five mil round. And I recognise these bits off a decor bridge, but what I'm interested in is these little round bits. So if I pull them off, we don't need them bits. And I've already cut off two little tiny bits of plastic here, which are roughly about five mil high. And I found these bits as well. Little bits of plastic left over from other kits. So what I'll do is I'll remake that air vent. And what I'll do is I'll glue that onto there. And that onto there. And that will give me a representation of what you see in the photograph. So if I just pick this up and show you before I glue it, you can actually see what I mean. So once all those three items are glued together and painted, it'll look similar to something we've got in the photograph. I'm holding signal box B in my hand and as you can see I've added the little air vent and I've added some um, guttering as well. Now the guttering is just bits of plastic and what I've done is I've taken the long bits off of this which had no nipples on it if you like and I just cut it up made the guttering mats on um, both signal boxes. Luckily enough there was enough to do both signal boxes. So the next thing I want to do, is, we're nearly there, we're finishing, um, is to add the chimney pots and a couple of um, drain pipes. So as you can see I've moved on a little bit, I've got the ridge tiles on the roofs now. Uh, these are mid calf ridge tiles, all I've done is scored them and then glued them on. Uh, hopefully the paint will highlight the lines that are on the ridge tiles. And I've also um, fitted the chimney pots to the chimney breasts. Now for you new subscribers, um, there's a video about how I made these for the station, part of the Medcalf fix. But uh, I'll just briefly go through what I've done anyway. So basically you take a toothpick and you cut it down to about 25mm and then you use a piece of paper, um, any size chimney pot you want. These are 8mm tall, these are 8mm um, by 20mm. You roll the 20mm of um, paper at the cut off piece edge so you keep the point because the point can go into the chimney. And then what you do, you drill open the chimney once you've glued your chimney pots to your bits of card and then glue them in. Um, yeah. And uh, I've also added a piece of card around the bottom, which I'll paint out to get rid of the white line. So hopefully that uh, it's almost ready for painting. It's nearly there. Now then, in the photograph we have, which looks like a landing, which goes right around the glue, around the um, signal box, but um, I won't be putting that in. And the reason being is because of the steps here. Because to bring it right round, poor old signalman will end up banging his head on it. And to be honest, 
I don't think it needs it. So I'm going to leave that off. So this now is virtually ready for painting. The roof needs painting, chimney pots need painting, and then weathering. Um, but, there's always a but, I'll be adding some little details inside. So if I just lift it off inside there, I'll probably be adding one of these little tiny fireplaces. I've only just glued these off, I'll just pick it up and show you. Uh, basically it's two bits of one mil card, you can see the joint there on the edges, one top of the other. It stands roughly about 10 mil high by about 7 mil wide and with the top and a fireplace bottom on it. And that's ready for painting. So I'll put them in, one in each signal box. Uh, which explains why you've got two chimneys, obviously one will go to the top floor and one will go to the lower floor. Um, regarding other details, I might add a clock, because every single box will have a clock. And I might add some rotting on underneath the lower window there. See, when you look through, you'll see some rods come down for the um, pull levers inside the signal box. And I think that's all I'm going to do for these signal boxes. So I have placed these signal boxes on the platform so we can have a proper look. And uh, I've gone round them. And uh, I said that these signal boxes would be identical. But they're not. I have just spotted something. As you can see here, the door handle's on the right, so the door will open on the left. And if we look at this one, the door handle's on the left, and the door will open on the right. So there is one slight deviation or inaccuracy between the two signal boxes. But apart from that, everything else is the same. Um, I have added the fireplaces and the clocks into the signal boxes now, so if we can get a closer look at them. So they're in, they're glued in. Right, so now we move on to the competition. Straightforward, three questions. First question. I gave the signalman a name at the start of the video. What is his name? Second question. How did I work out the dimensions for the chimney in the chimney stack? And the last question. What is uniquely different between the two signal boxes? So, now that you've seen the video and you know how these have gone together, so you know what you're getting really. And if you're interested in signal box B, all you have to do is answer the questions in a comment below. And the answers will be drawn out two weeks from this video being uploaded and your names will be pulled out of a hat. So let's go through the questions one last time. The name of the signalman. How I worked out the dimensions for the chimney breast. And what is the subtle difference between the two signal boxes. So I think that's all from me this week. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, and good luck with the competition. Thanks for watching now. Bye.